In our last three video logs, we've covered all aspects of fitting a raised bed above a garage in order to house our mountain bikes. We've already calculated how high the bed frame needed to go. We've also fitted some first fit electrics. We've made two over wheel arch units to house a water tank and some more electric components. And hopefully now, in part four of our garage build, we're hoping to get everything permanently installed. Hi guys, we're Van Life My Way. My name's Nikki. And I'm Paul. We're a husband and wife team who have had many adventures over the years and now we're planning to take early retirement and make Van Life our next adventure. Coming from a background of equipping vehicles for overland and expedition travel, we hope you'll find our van build of interest as we create a van perhaps better suited to modern van life. So do come along on our journey as we build our mobile home whilst taking you on some mini adventures in our camper van, Rad the Silver Surfer. More often than not, if you're converting an older van, you'll often find holes in the floor from where the old floorboards were screwed down or where there's some chairs been. And often on Facebook, I see people asking, how do you address those holes? How do you fill them in? Well, as long as they're non-structural, they don't need to be welded. One option is to use a seam sealer. This is used throughout the entirety of your van on all joints and can be brushed on. Some people recommend a rivet. I don't suggest using a rivet. Rivets, more often than not, are aluminium, and aluminium and steel do not like each other at all. An aluminium rivet will corrode the whole area around the steel work. I see some people recommending filler. Filler's fine, but it sets quite hard and can be brittle and can fall out, but also it's porous, it can hold water, so I'm not gonna be filling. Some people recommend bonding a coin. Nothing wrong with that, that'll work. What I'm going to be using on the small holes that I've got in the floor of the van is the same polyurethane sealant that we've used to seal the skylights and the windows and I'm going to show you how. So this is one of the holes in my floor that I need to fill. It's been left over from where the original floor came out and it was screwed down to. I had to use my angle grinder to get those screws out so I've taken a little bit of the paint away and it's just started to corrode a little bit. So all I'm going to do is give that a quick scotch, a quick wipe with panel wipe just to make sure that's nice and clean so my paint sticks well to it. I'm now going to use a galvanising spray because I don't need a primer or a top coat for this. So while that paint is quickly drying on the floor of the van, I've gone underneath to put some masking tape over the bottom of the holes we're going to be filling. And this is so when I start filling, it doesn't squirm and worm out the bottom. Totally unnecessary. In other words, I'm only filling the hole with all that's needed. So now that paint is dry, we can take our corking gun with some polyurethane sealant and just fill those holes. I often find if you want to smooth that out, strangely enough, if you spit on your finger, there you go guys, simple as that. Once the sealant's dry, you can remove the tape, get a little bit of car body under seal, and stab it on the bottom. Some of the holes I need to fill are threaded where there's been some fixing points. So all I'm going to do is put some of the polyurethane sealant onto a stainless steel dome headed nut and just screw it in. That's all of those unnecessary holes filled in in the floor of my van. But one thing I need to do before I can put my floor down is mount these brackets that I've made in the floor of my van to support my LPG tank. Thank you. 
So I'm about to install my floor beams that support the weight of the bed frame and units. The beams have already been pre-fitted as seen in a previous vlog and have been drilled and tapped to accept fixings. The high points of my van floor and where they touch the aluminium beam I am now roughing up to form a good key when fixing both mechanically with nuts and chemically with polyurethane sealant. With all the beams secured, I can now reinstall my pre-cut insulation and fix and seal with foil tape. My ply flooring has been pre-drilled and varnished. This is only a thin 9mm ply floor as it's my beams and units that will be supporting all the weight in this garage. My overwheel latch units are made from 30 by 30 BR section from KJN Automation. The units will be supporting a 45 litre water tank and opposing electrics. The fixings make easy work of building up these units. Sheep's wool makes an ideal insulation and additional sound dead material. Once installed, it will expand a little more to fill and hold in place. Units and floor have already been pre-drilled to allow me to secure into the beams in my floor. Some additional brackets help stability, bolting direct into the rig nuts I've placed in the framework of the van.
the slides installed, we check the length of the angle we need in order to support the base of our slides. Distance lengthwise for the tray. The base I'm using is polymer coated marine fly, the type usually found on Eiffel Williams style trailers. The bikes were aligned and brackets for the bike forks temporarily installed with some beefy screws. All aligned perfectly, and with the help of Azza, it was time to mark and permanently fit. Now only clean bikes are fit for the finale. Socks. It's not like in there. <laughs> oh! Oh! <laughs> oh! Oh! Um, You're recording already, are you? Yeah. Yeah. So that's our bed frame. Okay, do now keep tapping on shit. While do it shout. So that's our bed frame built over our storage area for our mountain bikes and our storage boxes. Our mountain bikes fit in side by side and the only way we could do that was by removing the pedals, removing the seat post and removing the front wheels. That's not ideal for everyone but it was only a two minute process per bike in order to do that but what it's allowed us is a lot more storage space inside the bed. We've also got our wolf storage boxes mounted onto a slide as well. Now these storage boxes, also known as ammo boxes, are a military application. They're super strong, they lock into place one on top of the other, and this slide can carry nine wolf boxes. Alternatively, we might not need nine, we might only take six. And that being the case, we can pop another shelf above here for items like skis, snowboards and such the like. This part of the van garage we've left as an open void for storage of such things like tables, chairs, snowboards, paddle boards, and any other board. <laughs>
Now the garage and bed is nowhere near finished though. This does conclude the build of the framework itself. We've still got our bed to mount and I've got quite a few electrics to put in there as well as some plumbing which I'll be covering in a few short videos after this one. So thanks for watching and if you want to watch the full process of this build you can see it in parts one, two, three and this part four.